anche Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's really good to welcome you to St. Peter's. Um, particularly good afternoon if you're watching online on Facebook um, this year. We're streaming our services. It's really good to have some people here in church and to have people watching online. It's a really warm welcome to St. Peter's for our first of two crib services. As we're still in the season of Advent, I'll be lighting our Advent um, candles uh, for weeks in Advent and today is the last day of Advent and this afternoon we're going to have a special afternoon exploring the story of Christmas. Unfortunately this year we're unable to sing Sad Face um, we love singing at Christmas, lots of carols, and uh, it's a really great shame we cannot sing in church. But we are allowed to have a singer, and we have a lovely singer singing for us uh, this afternoon. So do um, listen, and uh, do remain seated, and just enjoy listening to the, the songs this evening and this afternoon. It's great to welcome you, and um, let us begin with a song. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to start by singing to you 2,000 years ago. Glory to God. Well, I probably ought to introduce myself, shouldn't I? That was rude of me earlier. You're wondering who I am, aren't you? My name is Joseph. I am Joseph. I live in a town called Nazareth in 
the region of Galilee. But originally I come from a town called Bethlehem, the town of David, a really important town. I worked really hard. I really like my job. I work with wood. I'm a carpenter. I like to build lots of things like what you're sitting on, pews and chairs and tables. I really like doing that. I like working with my hands and working and building things. Do you think you can keep a secret for me? Yeah? yeah? Okay, I'm going to tell you a secret. I fancy this girl. <laughs> She's called Mary. She's amazing. So beautiful and kind. I think I want to marry her. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee, to a girl pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The girl's name was Mary. That's who I am. I was in my mid-teens when I got the news that I would give birth to a child. The angel said to me, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give, him, give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. My first thoughts were that of fear, but I remembered again what the angel said to me. Do not be afraid. You have found favour with God. God has chosen me, Mary, not anyone else to be the mother of the Saviour. The fact that God had chosen me to be Jesus' mother made me feel very daunted and scared. I was amazed. Why me? Mary, from Nazareth, the daughter of Anna and Joachim. We are just ordinary people. Why me? What makes me so special? However, I replied to the angel saying, I am the Lord's servant. I have put my faith in God and follow the news that I have been given. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't have guessed what I've just heard. I feel a bit sad. Mary's just told me that she is expecting a baby. And so I was wondering whether to marry her after all. But that night when I was fast asleep in bed, I had the st most strange dream, the strangest dream of my entire life. For an angel appeared to me and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the baby in her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The baby will be God's son, and you are to call him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Wow, I didn't quite know what to do with that dream. What did I eat? But it did make me feel better about the situation because I really wanted to believe Mary and to trust that the baby was from God. I decided to go with what my heart was telling me and what the angels said. I wanted to trust them. And so I took Mary as my wife. It was amazing and I love her very much. And I promised to be there for her and for the son. And I said I would care for the child as if he was my own son. Well, some time passed from that, and the Roman Emperor, Caesar Augustus, wanted to do a census. That's like a survey of everyone living in his empire. And he decreed that every man had to go back to his hometown to register. This meant that I had to pack up our bags and travel 90 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem, where I was born. The only slight issue was that Mary was almost ready to have a baby. It would have taken us days to get there. So, to make the journey possible for Mary, 
I found us a donkey, which didn't come cheaply, but was well worth it. So, I was wondering if you'd like to sign with me, Little Donkey. So, with, I've got some helpers here, and you can see them, because I've got to stay a bit further back. So, to do the sign, Little Donkey, we're going to put one hand down for Little, and then Donkey, you're going to do two flappy ears. Excellent, you look really well done, everybody. So whenever you hear Little Donkey in the song, can you make sure you do that sign for me? Should we try it again? Ready? Little Donkey. Well done. Now, in the middle, there's the chorus. And it goes, ring out the bells tonight. So we're going to imagine we're ringing some bells, like the big ones above um, in the tower. So we're going to ring out those bells. And then we're doing the sign for tonight. Now, Bethlehem is really easy to sign. I'm going to do a little tiny shape like that. Bethlehem. And we're going to do it again. Bethlehem. Now, we're going to follow a star. So we're going to point up to the sky. Follow that star tonight. Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Wow, you look marvellous. So, should we see if we can... I'm going to sing the song and you can join in with those actions when we get to it. So, after a really long journey, we arrived and I was desperate to find somewhere for us, somewhere comfortable for us to stay, particularly because Mary was almost ready to give birth. Frustratingly, everywhere we tried, they told us that they were full. 
So we had to keep on asking different innkeepers. And we kept on being rejected because everywhere was full. For everyone had come back for the census. And I was getting so desperate, I was tired and hungry. That's not a good combination. And just wanted to find somewhere to sleep. Do you think you could help me? Do you think you could help me and Mary find somewhere to stay? Yeah. Yes, I think so too. One way I think you can all help us is if you can give me three knocks, not just yet, on the count of three on your pew. Because then we can search through the whole village, the whole town, we can look and see whether there's any place for us to stay. So on the count of three, please can you all knock on the door? One, two, three. Well, thank you so much. You've helped us because a very kind innkeeper who saw how pregnant Mary was said to us we could use his stables. So that's where we set up camp for the night. But I'm not expecting a comfortable night. Hello everybody. Hello. Hello. I'm a shepherd. I look after my sheep on the hills above the beautiful village of Bethlehem. Many a long night I've sat by the open fire on the hills, watching out for danger. You know, wolves. They might want to attack my sheep. Well, last night something amazing happened. We were all huddled by the fire in the dark and suddenly the sky was filled with light and sound. So beautiful, we couldn't believe our eyes. All these angels. I knew that's what they were. They were singing praise to God. Not that I understood the words, but I just knew they were beautiful and their singing was beautiful. Then the angel said, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. So the angel, the angel told us that a baby boy had just been born in the village of Bethlehem, just below us. He was God's very own son. They told us we should go and welcome him. Well, we looked down onto the village 
And there was a big star shining brightly above the stable. So we gathered our sheep and went to see. And what did we find? A baby lying in a manger. You know, what the animals eat out of, filled with straw. He was all wrapped up and lying on the straw. Well, we could not help but worship him. We knew he was the son of God, born to save the world. The angels had told us. We left a gift of a lamb and went round the whole town, telling everyone we met the good news of Jesus' birth. Oh, good afternoon. My name is Melchior, but some people call me Michael. <laughs> I am the leader or king of a group of people that come from Persia. Now, you know that country today as Iran. We are scientists who also study the stars. We saw a bright star some time ago, and we also studied our books, like this one here, which is written by the Roman writer Tacitus. And in this book, he tells us that a special king is to be born somewhere in the east. So, we set off to follow this bright star from Iran. It was a long journey, and we travelled on camels. And I'll tell you something, they're jolly uncomfortable. <laughs> but after a long journey, we reached a town called Jerusalem. And we went straight to the palace to find King Herod. And I asked him, well, where is the new baby king? And he said, I don't know. You go and uh, try and find him, and when you have found him, let me know so that I can uh, uh, go and see him also. Now, we didn't trust Herod, but the star appeared again, and it took us to a small village just outside Jerusalem called Bethlehem. And there we found the baby called Jesus. But he wasn't in a palace. He was in a rough stable surrounded by animals. But we knew he was the right person. And we spoke to his parents, Mary and Joseph, and then we 
knelt down and offered him presents. Gold, because he was a king. Incense, because he was a priest. And myrrh, because by his life and death he would bring people back to God. And you know, that's the reason why you give presents to people at Christmas. Because God gave us all the present of Jesus. Well, I really must get home to Persia, and I'm not going to see Herod. Well, wasn't he a fine gentleman? So grand. I think it's time to say some prayers to God about all this. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, I love the story about you being born with the animals in the manger. I'm so glad that Mary and Joseph had you and that you laid under that big star for the world to know how much God loves us. I pray everybody on the whole earth can learn this story and remember that every Christmas is celebrated because of you. If I meet new friends someday who don't know this story, help me to tell it to them and show them how amazing it is. Dear God, I love the baby lamb that kept Jesus warm on the night he was born. Thank you for giving him the understanding to know what he was supposed to do for the baby. Thank you for all the animals that helped Mary and Joseph. And don't let people be mad at the innkeeper for not giving them a room. I understand the inn was full. He did help them the only way he could. Please let the story of Jesus being born give all people a big heart during Christmas. Help them to see how much you love them. Lord, I want to be a light for the world like you. Help me to remember during this Christmas season to let my light shine for all the people I see. Help me to say the right words, act like you and understand their problems as you would. Help me to shine. Fill me with your love, patience, care, compassion and strength. Lord, we are so sad not to be with our families this Christmas. We pray especially for those who will be alone. Bless them, Lord, and let them know of your love. We pray that we will all be reunited with our loved ones soon. We ask these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
and then we'll repeat that verse at the end. Thank you very much for coming to our crib service. Um, we're coming to the end now and uh, if you could kindly stay in your seats until the warden uh, asks you to leave so that we can leave in an uh, orderly, dis socially distanced way. The blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and always. Amen.